Waktu nung kelas, selama tengah hari. Okay, now for today's lectures, we start with one more example, which will cover. We have we have covered truss, we have covered beams, we have covered combination of cable and beam. Now, let's look at one frame example. Statically indeterminate frame, you have a pin support and also a pin support here. So this is a very simple statically indeter indeterminate frame. Then loading given 75 kN at mid-height of the column. We have distributed load, 25 kN per meter, 9 meter here. EI is constant. EI is the same for AC and CD. So, uh, for this frame, you are asked to find the reactions. Find the reaction for the frame. Reaction force here, 2. Here, reaction force here, 2. 1. And support D and A. And use method of least work. In this example, you follow the same procedure as the case for thrust and beam. First, you have to know the degree of statical indeterminacy. This is very easy to identify. You have four reaction forces, only three equilibrium equations. So, degree of statical indeterminacy is one. Okay. Next, you have to choose, because the degree is one, then you have to choose one redundant. So, either one you can choose, dx, dy, ax, or ay. We can choose either one as the redundant. But in this example, we choose dx, horizontal reaction force here, as the redundant. Okay? But unless it is specifically requested that you choose dx, then you can choose any other, ax, ay, dx, dy. So this is a frame problem. So the strain energy stored in the frame comes from bending and also axial deformations. But in this example, we are given only the value of EI. EA is not given. So we do not have to consider the axial deformations. So bending moment, we have to evaluate bending moment. Okay? So the first thing that we have to do is because you have to calculate bending moment, you need to know the reaction force. So we find the reaction force by using equilibrium equations. And you consider this dx as a loading. You consider dx as a loading, the redundant that you want to find together with other loadings, 75, 25, and dx as a, a load. Then under these loading conditions, then you find what is the dy, ax, and ay in terms of, in terms of dx. So finally you get, just use the three equilibrium equations, then you have ax is equal to this, and then dx appears in this expression. So ax in terms of as a function of dx. The same thing for dy in terms of dx. And finally, you have ay also in terms of dx. So these steps is necessary First, for to find bending moment, and secondly, after you find the redundant, you substitute here, you find dy. You substitute here, you find ay, and also you substitute there, you find ax. So these three equations will be used later on at the end when you want to find the reaction forces, after you have determined the redundant force. So the next step is, this is because this is a frame problem, so the Bending deformation is the main deformation, so we have to find bending moment. So bending moment is evaluated next. So for this part, you have to cut, you have to find bending moment at least once here, and once here, and one there, so three times. So dx start from here, x for this part start from d, x for this part, cb start from c, and for ba also start from c. So this is the way we calculate the bending moment, cut here, for this part here, portion DC, cut here, and then we get DX, consider DX as a load, 
and this is dy. Okay. So finally, you are going to get dyx. This will be dy. Okay. dyx minus 25x squared over 2 dy in terms of dx, and then finally, you get bending moment also as a function of dx. Next part is this part here, and this part, so you follow the process, use the appropriate free body diagram, then you should be able to get the bending moment here. Get the bending moment here, and uh, this is the calculations. Consider the x as a loading, and finally you get bending moment as a function of the x again, as a function of the x. Next, the last part, bending moment. This is the last part. So x start from this origin. So use this free body diagram. Notice that dx is still applied here. Then you get as a result. Again, bending moment for this part is a function of dx. It's a function of dx. So for this problem, the equation that you need to use is, this is a frame problem. So the, according to principle of least work, del strain energy, del dx, the redundant that we have chosen, must be equal to zero. And because this is a bending problem, then you have to use this, finally these equations. You have to differentiate partially the bending moment equation with respect to the redundant dx, multiplied with x, divided by ei, integrate. So, this table helps you again, DC, CB, BA, the X coordinates, the limit, and the bending moment, and this one, del M, del DX, you need this, del M, del DX, and you have del M, del DX, these terms, and then del M, del DX is these terms here. So, this is the one that we need to be substituted here. And finally, you have this a bit lengthy integration to do. Okay. So take this, substitute here, take this, substitute here, take this one, put it here, take this, put it here, and then this one, finally here, and this here. Integrate, use the correct limit of integration, 0 to 9, 0 to 3, 3 to 6. This one depends on the, on the, coordinate system that you use for that particular part. So finally, you get this equation in terms of dx, and then dx you get negative. dx you get negative, it means that the direction that you assume for the redundant in the beginning of the calculation is not correct, then the correct direction should be opposite to that. Okay, so from this equation, we get the redundant first. So method of least work gives you the redundant first. If you have degree of statical indeterminacy is 1, then you get 1 redundant, the value. Then the rest of the unknown forces, substitute here, this one, put it here. This is the first equation that we evaluated. So for Ax, in terms of dx, so once you know dx, substitute here, then you get Ax. Again, negative means our assumption is wrong. dy, substitute dx, get positive, the assumption is correct, and finally Ay. So, so that is the answer for the reaction forces for this statically indeterminate frame. The x redundant determine, and then af after that we find the other reaction forces. So of course the, the reason why we solve this is we, we want to get the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. Once you get all these reaction forces, then you can draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram as well. So that is the procedures involved. Even for beam frame and truss or any other example, the composite one, with the cable and beam, you find that they are similar. Get the statical determinacy, how many? And then after that, choose redundant. And after that, you have to, if it's a beam problem, you have to find bending pump bending moment, if it's a frame problem, you have to find bending moment. If you're asked to consider axial deformation, you have to find axial force. Then, use the appropriate 
principle of least work, least work equations. Yeah? This one. Then, get all the necessary bending moments, do the partial differentiation with respect to redundant, and do the integrations. And this is the part that will help you make this table, so you summarize everything to do these integrations. And don't forget EI, okay? If EI, this one, EI is the same for all portion, all, all frames, so EI is eventually factor out and it does, not, it does not affect the redundant force. If EI is constant, if EI is not constant, then you have to make, take care that EI for different portion, what is the EI value? In this particular case, EI, they are all the same. Now, this is the exercise here. This, this is an exercise uh, involving this frame. This frame is... Uh, figure A shows a statically determinate frame. This is statically determinate. Pin roller, three reaction forces only. So you can solve this. Now, the, the question here is... Now, if it is later found that... Now, suddenly, it is later discovered. You want to be roller, but meaning that this one can move horizontally, freely. But in the, maybe in the actual constructions, suddenly that parts cannot move anymore. If it is later found that support at A has prevented horizontal movement, you want it to be free, but actually the structure that it is being built, that part, this point A here, cannot move horizontally. Meaning that instead of roller, this one has become Instead of roller, it has become a, a pin. Yeah? Because roller can move horizontally, but if it is found that support at A has prevented horizontal movement of joint A, meaning that this one has changed to a pin joint, pin support. So if it is a pin support, this is also pin. So a pin and pin for reaction forces. So the frame becomes statically indeterminate. So this is, the main thing is, ask you to, you are able to understand that this one will make this problem become statically indeterminate. And the degree of statical indeterminacy is one, so you have to choose either one as redundant. Then you ask to determine the percentage change in magnitude of horizontal reaction at C, use method of least work. Okay, so first understand what is the meaning and then follow the process of method of least work for frame. And then answer, give answer, what is the percentage change in the reactions. When this one, when this one is roller, all the horizontal force is taken by this reaction, uh, by this support. If this is a roller, all the reaction forces horizontally is taken by this. So C is 50. C is directly 50. But when this one becomes pin, so part of the horizontal force will be taken by this support and part, and then they, they will share the horizontal load now. So what is the percent change in the horizontal reaction at C? When that part changed from low roller to a pin support. Another one, this one is uh, another simple example which is statically indeterminate, and the degree of statical indeterminacy is also one. Three reaction forces here fixed, one roller support here. And for the frame shown in figure B, determine the support reactions. Use method of this work. Okay. So, this is two frame example for, for you to for you to look at. Now we look at the, the Sayonara example. Okay. This is a Sayonara example. So everybody has to be feeling a little bit Sad now. After that, you see music come out. Sad music. 
So everybody become very quiet, sad. Lecturer also become sad. So let's, let's look at this final example where the degree of statical indeterminacy is not one. So far we have been looking at example where the degree of statical indeterminacy is one. So this is example where the degree of statical indeterminacy is more than one. So we will see later when it is more than one, the calculation become very much lengthy. So this is a two, three span, three span, one, two, three continuous beam. The reaction for the three span continuous beam. So this is a continuous beam, and this is a example where it is statically indeterminate, and the degree of statical indeterminacy is two here. So you check the degree of statical indeterminacy because how many reaction forces do we have? One, two, three. A, there should be a horizontal reaction. So, one, two, three, four, five. There are five unknown forces. Here, the horizontal reaction is not shown because we know it is zero. And the equilibrium equation only three. So, this is the degree of statical indeterminacy is two. So, when it is two, then you have to choose two redundant now. So, either one, AY, CY, AY, DY, AY. AY. So it's up to you to choose. You want AY, BY, AY, CY, AY, DY, BY, CY, BY, DY, CY, DY. Which one? The in, you have to choose either two. Okay, either two. You have to choose two. No, one is not enough because the degree of statical indeterminacy is two now. In this example, we choose AY and DY. Uh, we choose BY and CY okay, as the redundance. Then we have to calculate the rest of the reaction forces, AY and DY, as a function of BY and CY. We consider the redundance, BY and CY, as a load acting on the beam. So you have to consider this. BY, CY as a load, like a concentrated load acting on the beam upwards at this point, at this point, they are actually reaction forces but when we want to solve this, you consider as a load together with this loading, you find what is the reaction forces AY and DY okay, using equilibrium equations so that is a, this slide shows the calculation process this one is the normal application of equilibrium equations Take a moment at D, you find AY. So AY is a function of BY and CY. Then another equilibrium equation, find DY, also as a function of BY and CY. Okay, so the same thing that we have seen. The only thing is here you have two redundants, BY and CY. So when there are two redundant, then you have to evaluate partial differentiation of the bending moment respect to the two redundant first with BY, next with CY so you have to evaluate bending moment here once cut here once, cut here once and cut here once three times of the three different span so here if it is, you make a very big table, long table so find the moment first, get the moment uh, the normal way then, but you have to evaluate these two partial differentiation. One with respect to BY, you get this. The next with respect to CY. Uh, there are, you need two partial differentiation because there are two redundants now. Then this one, the same thing, get the bending moment equation first, then differentiate two times. First with BY, next with CY. Lastly, the last portion here, get the bending moment, then these two partial differentiation, BY and then CY. So the rest of the procedures is, you have to apply principle of least work. Now when you have 
i is degree of statical indeterminacy is one you have only one equations well, when the degree of statical indeterminacy is two you have two equations so principle of least work gives you these two equations if you have degree of statical indeterminacy three you have three equations and these equations is del u del b y equal to zero del u del c y is equal to zero so from this one you get this from this you get this that's why we have to differentiate partially respect to by and also partially respect to cy because it, it is needed here and in this equation here so next is next everybody has to turn like this because this table when you have degree of statical indeterminacy to the table become very long two pages rotate rotate again rotate oh. very long table somewhere here this this is the same thing as what we have seen bending moment only one but you have two column of this These two columns, uh, that you, you need these two to form the two equations, to form the two equations. So you have to form that two equations and then del u del b y del u del b y is equal to you have to substitute the bending moment and the del m del b y so you have to form two equations this one multiply with this integrate from 0 to 15 ei they are all constant ei all constant then this one multiply with this the integrate from 0 to 15 this one multiply with this integrate from 0 to 15 EI here is constant. If EI is not constant, then you have to pay attention to what is the EI there. 2 EI, 3 EI. The next equation is this one multiplied with this, integrate. This one multiplied with this, integrate. This one multiplied with this, integrate. And make them equal to zero. You get these two equations. Okay? So if you try to solve these two, finally you get BY and CY you get the by and cy by solving two simultaneous equations so when you have degree of statical indeterminacy i is equal to 2 then you have to solve simultaneous equations to get the two redundant after that after that you substitute back here After you get the by and cy by solving the two simultaneous equation that come from the principle of least work, then you substitute back into this equation A and equation B. You can find your Ay and also dy here. Okay? So that is the process. So when it comes to problems with many, many degrees of statical indeterminacy, this will become very, very time consuming to solve. Right? Normally in that cases, we solve using the help of computer. When you want to solve many equations. To solve equation, two equations, how, how many minutes do you need? Two equations. One hour, two hours. Uh, one day. Ooh. <laughs> one day, what kind of calculator do you use? One day you need calc done day then only one equation half a day so half a day you cannot solve the questions so three equations three equations how many days one and a half days oh. four equations two days oh. 
you have to use a calculator which is uh, you know there's a calculator that you don't need to press you just run faster because press takes time there's a calculator that just very fast that one can solve one equation 20 minutes two equation 35 minutes that calculator don't use the type that you press this this is a non-contact type calculator it's heat heat sensor okay so when it comes to problems with many many degrees of many many of degrees of statical indeterminacy this is normally happen in the real structures which we will solve this we we normally solve those kind of problems using computer programs but you need to know the basic the basic behind it so the solution is not given here so you have you can try to integrate this and get the by and cy okay? now that is the end of the our topic of method of least work and also that comes to the end of these lectures on method of least work and that comes to the that comes to the few moments that we have left together in ES254. Today we have evaluations of evaluation of the lecturers and also evaluation of the course. Okay? So after this you are asked to fill up a form. Now before that, let me okay. I know you are feeling very sad now, so please concentrate. Let me finish off with this. Now, just want to let you know there is another method that I mentioned very early. You have method of consistent deformations, other than method of least work. It is, it is also a very useful method. This is a false method. This is method of research that we have learned and covered in ES254. You use Castigliano's second theorem as the compatibility equations. In method of consistent deformations is also another false method. We do not use Castigliano. We use superposition principle. We use superposition principle to get the compatibility equations. This one we do not cover, but in some of the books you will see that this is one of the methods which is commonly used for analyze, analyze, analyzing statically indeterminate structures. And it, it does, does not use Castellano's second theorem, but it uses this superposition principle. Okay. So we do not have time to go into detail into this, but this is a method if you refer to some books, it is covered in most of the books. Yeah. And there are some comparison between these two. Method of least work more convenient for analyzing composite structures to beam together with cable cannot be used for analyzing effects of support, settlement, temperature changes and fabrication errors. This is more general, able to be applied to for the cases where you have effect of support settlements and also temperature changes and fabrication errors. So these are the comparison between the two. What is the limitation? What is the advantages of one compared to the others? You know, this kind of example, uh, suitable method of this work can solve this and also this. But method of consistent deformation will be more difficult. But for a problem like this, where you have support settlement, method of this work in general cannot handle this kind of problems. So there are the comparison between the advantages and disadvantages. So this, in order for you to remember these last lectures, these are the exercises for you to go through. Exercise 1, exercise 2. Okay. Question A, B, and C, and also question number three. 
right? So that is the end of the uh, lectures of, on method of least work.